Channel advises parental guidance is recommended for persons under 15 years. Charles Bean was an Australian journalist. He reported the Great War from the front line. Gentlemen, prepare to advance! Advance! Come on! Come on! Up and over! Get up and over now! You get up and over now! Go now! He wrote a history of the war and he created the way the war would be remembered. Historians still debate his legacy. He created the Australian War Memorial. For his work, they offered him a knighthood. But he said thank you and... I'm the representative of my country and not of a newspaper. He took his argument all the way to the top of British command. They allow him to accompany the Gallipoli landing, but they make him promise not to publish anything until authorised. Australians are to go into battle, and their official correspondent is officially silenced. Dawn is slowly growing. It is 4.38. The troops are transferred to the warship's boats, which then make for the beach. I catch, faintly, a distant knocking, like the sound of an axle box heard far off when a cart's coming along a rough bush road. It is the distant echo of rifle fire. So our men must at least be on the beach. Nine forty AM. It was my turn to land. Climbed down a rope ladder, moved off, waved goodbye to Basley. The sight of the hills as we got in closer made one realize what our men had really done. The place is like a sand pit on a huge scale, raw sand slopes and precipices. The boat grounded in two feet of water. I got out carefully, waded to the beach and stood on Turkish soil. I took a photo of the fellows landing. Green meadows, rows of tall, slender trees along the hedges. The familiar pea soup overcoats and slouch hats talking to the kiddies in the street. Sixty thousand Australians will be killed during the Great War. The battles take place on the Western Front, a line of trenches that stretch across Europe. It is the largest thing ever built by human beings. The German nation has put this line across another people's country and made a fool of all the progress and civilization on which we relied so confidently. A nation gone mad has been able to place across the world a line which no man at present can move. On the top of a gently rising hill was a pretty village with its church, its orchards. Now imagine a gigantic ash heap. Take away all traces of any living thing, not even a spider. 
I always feel surprised when I get out of Bozier's alive. I don't pretend to be very brave, but I want very much to write the history of this war. He was concerned the Australian story would be lost in a larger story of the British at war. He started his own war records section. He demanded Australian artists, Australian writers, Australian photographers, and he got the best. Frank Hurley. Will Dyson. Arthur Streeton. He sent teams of people to scour the battlefields. He filled warehouses with objects, relics, evidence. He wanted one day to build a great museum to the... In 1941, Charles's museum opened. People could see and touch the objects of the Great World War. The museum opened just in time for a second World War. If you'd had the life he'd had, had from 1914 to 1918, you would be so changed. In, the, in your personality because you had seen such suffering and he, I'm sure, felt in writing the history and also in creating the Australian War Memorial that he could make Australia understand the inheritance that they had that had to make Australians better people to be worthy of the, the men who'd lost their lives. I'm not disagreeing with any of that, but none of that is particular to Bean and none no. of it is particular to Australian experience. I think there is a slight danger of investing a certain uniqueness in this process, which I just don't think is there. But he had... One of their objectives on this warm morning is the little village of Pozier. Sixty thousand British soldiers are lost on this one day. Very few gains are achieved, in some places not even a yard. The men are killed as they leave the trenches and stand upright. They never get anywhere near Pozier. That night, British commander Douglas Haig reports... It is estimated there are over 40,000 casualties thus far. The cross of Jesus going on before. Meanwhile at Pozier, the 2nd Australian Division is ordered into a hurried and bungled attack to enlarge the site of the village. Matthew Grant's younger brother, Stevie, has just been killed. I want you to know that I think Stevie and many others were just murdered by the stupidity and ignorance of our high 